steps on each other. Please be seated. I would like to welcome all of you and thank you for joining us as we celebrate the wedding of Remy and Paul and bear witness as they begin their new life together as husband and wife. <clears throat> I have lost track of the number of weddings I've done and the number of times I've said words like that, but I can tell you it is very different when it is your own son. When Sandy and I got to know Remy, uh, we quickly learned that she is someone who tends to be organized, tends to make plans, and also tends to follow through with her plans. Last spring, Easter weekend, we came down here and spent the weekend with David and Francesca and met them for the first time. And I mentioned something to David and Francesca about Remy's quality. And they said, oh, she's always been like that. But we also saw for the first time, particularly that weekend, there is also a childlike quality to her. She took great delight in the alligators as much as many of the kids have who are here this weekend. And it's a good thing that uh, she has a inner child, an inner child that she lets out because that is needed to be in partnership with our son. <laughs> I think Paul is as attached to his transformers now as an adult as he was when he was a kid. Also, we learned something else around that time. We learned that when Remy was a child, her mother, Francesca, used to read to her at night stories from James Gurney's Dinotopia books. And that was something else that was fortuitous. Uh, because it turns out Paul just absolutely loved those Dinotopia books, and James Gurney was his favorite author for a period of time. He once went to hear James Gurney talk and got a, him to inscribe one of his books, and it said, To Paul, a citizen of Dinotopia. So, as Sandy said, Remy and Paul's relationship is obviously a relationship made in Dinotopia. <laughs> Remy and Paul met through a website, and <laughs> it occurred to me it might be interesting to ask Paul what they said in describing themselves. And what Remy said according to Paul, was, she's looking for all the cliches. Partner in crime, other half, special someone, best friend, true love, happily ever after. So that's, maybe you could say a little light and humorous, but also what struck Paul about it was the directness. And I think we can acknowledge he looked at some others entries on that website, and the others, he said, tended to be kind of casual. Oh, I'm just not looking for anything serious. I'm just looking for someone to spend a little time with. So he was struck by the directness. There's also another quality, though, to those words, and that is there is honesty and vulnerability there. And then Paul told us, he told me, what he said about himself and what struck me was this line. He had a picture of his dog, Toby, and he said, this is my dog, Toby. She's awkward. We have that in common. <laughs> so again, humor, light, but also there was some honesty and vulnerability in that as well. Remy and Paul are committing themselves to each other for life. And they are mature people, and they've had conversations 
about what their future will look like, and to the extent they can, they've made plans. But no matter how mature you are and how well you plan ahead, you will encounter things that are unexpected, unknown, and even unwanted. That's simply unavoidable. So what that means is, to make the commitment that they are making today involves risk. It takes hope, it takes courage, and it takes faith. So we are here today to celebrate with them this act of hope, courage, and faith, and to bear witness today and pledge our support to their hope, their courage, and their faith. Amen. Amen. Paul and Remy have chosen a poem which Paul's sister Annie will read at this time. All I Know About Love by Neil Gaiman. This is everything I have to tell you about love. Nothing. This is everything I've learned about marriage. Nothing. Only that the world out there is complicated, and there are beasts in the night and delight and pain. And the only thing that makes it okay sometimes is to reach out a hand in the darkness and find another hand to squeeze, and not to be alone. It's not the kisses, or never just the kisses. It's what they mean. Somebody's got your back. Somebody knows your worst self and somehow doesn't want to rescue you or send for the army to rescue them. It's not two broken halves becoming one. It's a light from a different lighthouse bringing you both safely home. Because home is wherever you are both together. So this is everything I have to tell you about love and marriage, nothing. Like a book without pages or a forest without trees. Because there are things you cannot know before you experience them. Because no study can prepare you for the joys or the trials because no one else's love, no one else's marriage is like yours. And it's a road you can only learn by walking it, a dance you cannot be taught, a song that did not exist before you began together to sing. And because in the darkness, you'll reach out a hand, not knowing for certain someone else is even there. And your hands will meet and then neither of you will ever be alone again. And that's all I know about love. Okay. <laughs> oh, you got me going. Okay. Can't read. Okay. Remy, do you promise to honor, love, cherish, and comfort Paul forsaking all others and holding on to only him as long as you both shall live. I do. Paul, do you promise to love, honor, cherish, and comfort Remy, forsaking all others and holding on to her as long as you, bo as long as you both shall live? I do. The following question is addressed to all of you here present. Your answer is we will, and I'm sure the couple would appreciate it if you gave it with some oomph. Will all of you witnessing these promises do all in your power to uphold these two persons in their marriage? We will. Okay, you turn towards each other. Paul, repeat after me. I, Paul, take you, Remy. I, Paul, take you, Remy. To be my wife. To be my wife. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Until we are parted by death. Until we are parted by death. This is my solemn vow. This is my solemn vow. Remy, repeat after me. I, Remy, take you, Paul. I, Remy, take you, Paul. To be my husband. To be my husband. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. 
to love and to cherish to love and to cherish until we are parted by death until we are parted by death this is my solemn vow this is my solemn vow in addition to those vows Remy and Paul chose to write longer vows which they shared fully with each other this morning and they will each read a portion of those vows now Paul would you please share your vows Deep breaths. <sighs> Remy, beautiful. I promise to do the little things, the things you ask but feel bad asking. I promise to always do the dishes when it's my turn, and if you've had a bad day, how about doing the dishes even if it's not? I promise to always go on the random adventures to Hobby Lobby when you've come up with an excuse to craft. <laughs> I promise to listen when you're frustrated and need to vent, and I promise to listen just as in intently when you're excited and just want to talk. And I promise to let you do the same. I promise to tell you about my day. I promise to tell you about the challenges and the successes and about my plans and my daydreams. I promise to never stop trying to make you laugh at the stupidest jokes. I promise to share my life with you even when it's not funny. Remy, I promise to spend the rest of my life loving you, and I promise to spend the rest of my life letting you do the same. I made it. Okay. Remy. <laughs> All right. Well, we both know that you're better with words, so. I vow, though, to wholeheartedly love you with everything that I have for the rest of our lives. And when I was working on my vows, I looked up love songs for inspiration. And as you know, I'm a huge Bruce Springsteen fan. And I found a song that I feel really expresses my love and our future. So I've asked Tommy and Trevor to help me out so I don't have to read anymore. <laughs> I don't get to kiss you <laughs> We said we'd walk together, baby, come what may. That in the twilight, we should lose our way. And as we're walking, a hand should slip free. I'll wait for you, should I fall behind. Wait for me We swore we'd travel Darling, side by side We'd help each other Stay in stride Each other's love steps fall So differently I'll wait for you if I should fall behind, wait for me. Everyone dreams of love lasting and true. Oh, you and I know what this world can do. So let's make our steps clear that the other may see. I'll wait for you If I should fall behind Wait for me Now there's a beautiful river In the valley ahead There neath the oak's bow Soon we will be wed Should we lose each other shadows of the evening trees I'll wait for you should I fall behind wait for me darling I'll wait for you should I fall behind wait for me okay these rings are a symbol of the vows by which Remy and Paul have bound themselves to each other and of the commitment they make to each other today and every day to come.
all repeat after me. Remy, I give you this ring. Remy, I give you this ring. As a symbol of my vow. As a symbol of my vow. And with all that I am and all that I have. And with all that I am and all that I have. I honor you. I honor you. Paul, I give you this ring. Paul, I give you this ring. As a symbol of my vow. As a symbol of my vow. And with all that I am and all that I have. And with all that I am and all that I have. I honor you. I honor you. Now that Remy and Paul have exchanged their vows and these rings, I pronounce that they are husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. You may kiss each other. You need to get your flowers. <laughs>